My name is Emil Malak. I am the CEO of VoIP Pal. Around 2004, I had a team of engineers came to see me. They were mostly Russians and Eastern European and Canadians. And they felt that the future in 10 years is going to be internet telephony. And I thought they were crazy. I went and did some checking, talked to a couple of electronic engineer, electrical engineers, and I had one meeting with them. And he says, these guys are right, they're on the right track. The future is going to be internet telephony because it's going to be much cheaper and it's going to be able to take much larger data transfer. So I supported them in the beginning. I paid them $500 a week and we kept going and then suddenly I talked to some businessmen in Vancouver and we decided to raise between 15 to 16 million dollars to see if what they're saying can work in practice. And we raised the money through the stock exchange, the junior stock exchange in Vancouver. And we employed about 25 engineers, software mainly and hardware. And I felt it was better before we do anything, before we patent anything, is to actually try the product. So we built four nodes, two in Vancouver, one in London, one in Denmark. And we tested between 2004, 2005, and we patent, started applying for patents. The first one, 2nd of November, 2006. What we decided to do is to make it a, a seamless transfer between the internet and the legacy telephony because we felt it's going to be backward from private to public and forward. And we designed a system where the transfer will be seamless between both sides because we knew that in 10 years, internet telephony will become much stronger and it's going to be much cheaper, easier to communicate, but you still need the legacy. So how do we make the transfer between the two go through without any big problems and large costs? And we tested and it worked, and when, then we applied for a patent. Then we said, how do we make an internet telephony enabler, such as social networkers like Google, Facebook, Apple, how do we make these companies compliant, the same rules and regulations that apply to legacy? And then we developed a suite of patents, like 911, legal intercept, free roaming, so we now have 17 patents that will make someone like Google tomorrow become an internet telephony enabler, which if, of course is a big competition to the present telcos. We built the nodes and we tested. It took us about a year and a half. We wrote the software, built the nodes and tested. And it worked. And we felt this is the quickest, easiest way that will enable switch backward and forward between legacy and internet, Wi-Fi. And we've proven to be right because right now there's billions of subscribers are using our system. So really, because people ask me, why, didn't you, why don't you operate as a company? That's another question that I will be able to answer. But the fact is, we have indirect subscribers, in my opinion, out there, not 10 million, not 100 million, billions of them that are using our system. Digifonica was the original company, and we raised this 15, 16 million dollars. And unfortunately, you know, we had a, an economic downturn with the bubble bursting in 2008. It was very hard to raise the money. I then decided to keep it going. And in 2011, I bought Digifonica and kept it going till it was taken over by Voipal in 2013-14. You know, at the time, we, the patents were not granted. They were provisional. So technically, they had no value because it could go either way with the USPTO. Either you're going to, with the USPTO, either you're going to get them or not get them. And we, I believe that the product was right. I believe we were innovative enough to be unique. And I believed in my product. So I said, well, I'll buy it. Well, to buy it was only, was no price because it had debts. It had around a million dollars. So I paid a dollar for it and took a calculated risk by keeping the patent prosecution going and financing it myself and paying the debts. And this is where we are today.
You have to believe in what you do. Okay, now, when you're a patent inventor, and our case, we invented the patent, we build the nodes, we practice the technology, we build a whole series of technology to be able to, be, to meet legacy compliance. So we're not patent trolls, we didn't buy the patents, we built everything, okay? But let me ask you another question here. This patent trolls business is a head, it's, it's a red herring by the Silicon Valley. If you buy a patent or you buy a technology or you buy a technology in a car, you have the right to exercise your rights against this technology. It just, the guys at the Silicon Valley came, said, we're gonna call patent trolls. You own a patent full stop, whether you invented it or not, you have rights against it. When you buy technology, a TV technology, a computer technology, you have rights. But they got, with their own public relation people, say patent trolls are bad. I'm not involved with patent trolls. I am a patent inventor and practicing person. Don't come and tell me I'm a patent troll and really it's not my business. The whole thing is about who owns the patent, what rights he has against the patent. And this has been flawed right now and it's been given a bad name and they say, oh, you're patent trolls. Well, we're not. The fact is we are here, we developed the technology and we practice it and then applied for a patent. Treat us as patent inventors and that's all what I'm interested in. Last May we filed three lawsuits, one against Apple, Verizon, AT&T. A few weeks later, Unified went to the USPTO says disqualify these two patents because we believe there was other patents before them. We won the case. Okay, we spent the year, we won the case. Apple came two weeks after Unified Patent filed on the same patents and said, we believe we have other prior art, disqualify the case. We are still in court right now. We have an institution procedure, that's a PTAB, which they put their case, we put our case, decision is made by November this year. I will stand for my right, which is the rights of my shareholders, till the last minute, and we will win. Because we have the technology, we have indirect subscribers out there that you people are using our technology to have your subscribers in and paying you a lot of money. I'm only asking for a little bit. I'm not asking you for 100% of the hundreds of billions you made, a little percentage I'm asking for. Our lawsuit right now, between four, total about $9.7 billion, plus automatic three times punitive damages, which I'm pleased that the Supreme Court Chief Justice came last year and said, if you're a patent infringer, you're a pirate, you should pay for it. You know, at least the courts are coming and saying enough is enough. So really and truly, it's only four. We have made another 60 aware of our patents. And hopefully we can settle, get on with life. The people who settle with us make money and our shareholders get their fair share. That's all I'm interested in.